So I have 250 subscribers. <laughs> like, bizarre. Guys, uh, thank you so much. You know, I planned something special for 250, but I teetered in the 240s for what felt like a really long time, and I would gain a subscriber, and I would lose a subscriber, and it would keep happening. And so I just kind of like... I just kind of like pushed that pan to the back of the stove and figured it'll happen when it happens. And now it happened. It happened like I got like a bunch at once. And um, I'm unprepared. <laughs> I'm unprepared. So how about a Wim Hof tutorial today? You want to do that? Um, I'm also kicking off my new regiment today. I'm going to do some standard weightlifting. I'm still going to squat every day. But... I'm going to take less time doing the squats, unless it's specifically my squat and deadlift day. I'm going to do um, a bench day, a squat day, a uh, deadlift day, and overhead press day. And then the other days will be like pseudo rest days where I'll squat. I'm also going to do some old-timey strongman as assistance work. I'm going to show you. I'll show you today how it's going to look. Today's going to be a bench day. Five by five, but I reserve the right to change my mind on that. I'm going to build some volume so that, you know, because I've gained a lot of strength. And I feel like you need the tissue to support new strength or you get injured. Uh, I don't think that's a controversial thought, but maybe it is. I don't know. And, uh, and yeah, and I'll talk you through Wim Hof. And I'm just really grateful, you know. Um, life's been hard on me these last few months since my relapse and having this every day, being able to come here, being able to back and forth with you fine people, um, has been a welcome and much needed distraction and I've benefited from it enormously and your support, attention and encouragement and criticism these things have proven invaluable, you know? Uh, I'm not doing badly in life, but I'm not a rich man. And I can't afford, like, a personal trainer. And even if I could, I wouldn't spend money on something that silly. No judgment against you if you have decided that. That's just different priorities, right? But um, I feel like in this way, I get to crowdsource my training. And I think it's the way of the future, man. I think we should all do it. I, like, I don't see why not. So, that's it for this part. The intro. <laughs> I have standard intros now. Um, stay tuned. We'll do some squats. I'll teach you a little Wim Hof. And um, once again, I'm really grateful for you. Thank you. Stay tuned. So this is all the squatting I did today. Every set, every rep. Three sets, I think six reps total. Not started with 95, then 135 for two, then 185 for one. Um, doesn't really seem like much of a squat workout, and truth be told, it isn't. But I'm doing upper body today. I'm doing a bench workout, and I'm using this as kind of a neuro primer. Plus, I'm hitting my daily minimum, which is 170, and really, I went over that. Um, I can say this for certain. Just six months ago, the idea of jumping up to 185 with so little warm-up and so little work would have been absolutely impossible. I am a much better squatter today than I was even just six months ago, and insanely better than a year ago. Squat every day, man, it's working. Like, it's putting this old Humpty Dumpty man back together again, and I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with my progress, and, and I enjoy it, which is more important than that, all of that. Like, I could make worse progress, and I would still do it, because it's fun, I like it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you Wim Hof in just a little bit, but first, I wanna watch this rep with you see how I'm doing. It felt easy. It felt like the hardest part was finding the spot on my back to put it. Like sometimes my traps are disagreeable. 
with that. I had a good strong brace. My stance looks exactly where I want it. Perfect. Like as far as as far as my squatting goes, that's as good as I can. Better than I deserve. So yeah, on to Wim Hof. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome to my Wim Hof tutorial. Also, this is my bedroom. Pretty snazzy, right? Um, <laughs> you can go on YouTube online and you can find really, really good Wim Hof tutorials by people that Wim Hof have professionally certified. I, I think that's a loose air quote certification. Um, and they'll be way better than what I'm going to do for you right now. But I do do mine a little bit differently, and I, I think it works great. Um, so, let's get started. The, before I do Wim Hof, I do five minutes of box breathing. Uh, the reason I do this is it regulates my respiratory system and nervous system, and it allows me to do Wim Hof at any point during the day. And for those of you who don't know, Wim Hof is just breathing exercises, or for my yogis out there, pranayama, uh, where you're practicing breath holds and building the longer and longer breath holds. And you get better at this wildly quickly. But anyway, back on point. I do box breathing first, five minutes roughly, um, just to get my body calm and regulated. Um, I start... Box breathing is a slow inhale for about four seconds, hold four seconds, exhale four seconds, hold four seconds, in and out through the nose. And um, oh, one more thing. People like to count their reps and in the yoga world, you'll see people using mala beads to count. Uh, that isn't super necessary. You can just have a stopwatch and run it. But if you want to count and you don't want to buy mala beads or construct anything else, you have mala beads right here. Um, I use a very simple system where I count with my thumb and I use the segments of my fingers as points of demarcation. So, right, you got three on each finger, four. 12. I, I couldn't multiply for a second. Uh, yeah. Um, and I just find a comfortable seat, come to my breath, in and out through the nose, start my timer, and then round one, thumb touches the pointer in the index, round two here, round three here. And it's breath work. So I'm going to show you how to do it, but like, You'll figure it out, you know, <laughs> like, like it's like, you can't really see me breathe. Like you can see me and I'll be breathing, but you're not really going to understand it until you practice it a little bit. And all you're do basically doing is You might have heard an audible sound while I was doing it. That's my Ujjayi Pranayama. You don't need to do that. I just do it. It's another yogi thing. Not necessary for this work at all. Um, but I, I always do it. I like doing it. And I do five minutes of that before I come to the Wim Hof work. I highly recommend you do it, especially if you don't do Wim Hof first thing in the morning. If you do it first thing in the morning, right after you wake up, it's not super necessary. To some extent, you've been breathing in a relaxed, regulated way all night, and you're not going to need a way to reset your respiratory nervous system. But I do box breathing because I do Wim Hof opportunistically. I don't, I, I'm not into it first thing in the morning. I don't know why. Um, probably I should look into that and work on it, but I don't want to. So that's that. Um, five minutes of box breathing in and out through the nose. Use your, your God made mala beads <laughs> um, if you want. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Just five minutes will do. Then Wim Hof. So Wim Hof is breath work through the mouth. 
Now you can do it through the nose too. Your times won't be as good. And I do use the Wim Hof app. It has a, a breath hold retention timer, but your stopwatch on your phone and a notebook would work just as well. You don't need the app. It isn't complicated. Um, what you're doing is you're taking full inhales, full exhales, in as close to a circular pattern as you can possibly muster. For those of you who don't do regular breath work, this is going to be really hard to, to make it circular. Don't agonize over it. It just comes with a little bit of practice, like literally a week, and you'll have it. Um, not necessarily fast breathing, but not necessarily slow either. So like a somewhat labored breath right? And I'll, and I'll show you. And you want to go to about 30. I'm not going to do 30 breaths for you. That'd be really boring. But just to give you an example, also your seat, it should be relaxed and comfortable. Don't try to hold a rigid posture. You can also do it laying down. I don't do it laying down. I, I feel like that's impractical, but also who, who gives a shit, right? Um, the breath will look something like this. You go for 30, 25 to 40, somewhere in that ballpark, you know? You might feel a little lightheaded, don't be alarmed. Um, and when you get to the end, you take a full exhale. I would also caution against like a forced exhale, but a full exhale and hold. Hit the timer, hold. Hold, I would say for don't kill yourself, but go to your limit, you know? It's close, kind of like you're lifting weights, you know? When you're going for a one rep max, is it really your one rep max? Like, it's more like 95 to 97%, you know? Because your one rep max is like kind of an unattainable number. There's the weight that you fail at, and then a mystery number slightly below it, you know? And that's round one. 30 breaths, roughly, in and out, somewhat circular, through the mouth, exhale, hold. Round two, then, after that, you take an inhale, you hold for about 30 seconds, and start round two. Round two is the same as round one. Inhale, exhale, somewhat circular. Your movements don't have to be as articulated as mine. I'm a dramatic breather. It might not be your way. And on an exhale, Timer, hold. Round three is a little different, right? You do the 30 second inhale hold again. Then a round three, you go a little bit longer. Inhale, exhale, circular fashion. Then maybe 35 or 40 breaths. Inhale, hold, timer. Now, when I do this, I like to listen to music because I'm always listening to music. Lately, it's been Tom Waits, and some of you have been bored to tears with my Tom Waits discussion. Just something to kind of distract my mind, gentle music, you know, or just don't use anything. You don't have to. I'm just saying that's something I've used. Um, on the third inhale hold, you might feel some tingling in the, in the fingers. You might feel some dizziness. You might feel a variety of unusual experiences that are somewhat internal and hard to describe. Um, don't worry about it. It's totally safe, I promise you. My beard is quite handsome. <laughs> um, and that's it. Now, you can do variations of this. You're your own person, and it's just breath work. The chances of you hurting yourself are almost non-existent and you could do multiple rounds. You could stagger rounds. You could 
do anything you want. And you want to record your breath holds. And every day, you know, compare your numbers. Why I like Wim Hof is... As you get better at pranayama, breath work, it gets better with you. It gets more challenging. So it has like a scalability to it. And there's a metric. There's the length of your holds. And they're fun to negotiate with. And like, it's interesting how some days you're worse at Wim Hof than others. And trying to figure out why. It's just like another metric that you can use to... Um, measure your health and wellness. So... That's the breathing part. And a lot of people skip the next part. Uh, the breathing part is the fun part. The next part is not fun at all. Uh, stay tuned. Cold shower. Okay, yes. I am sitting in the basin of my tub naked. Uh, it's cold shower time, man. And I skipped this for the longest time because it's just miserable. And I didn't want to do it. But the cold showers are going to help your breath work enormously. I have no idea what the mechanism of action is. And I, I, there's a lot of stuff about it. I'm very skeptical about, but the numbers don't lie. Like when I started incorporating the cold showers, my breath holds got longer and longer and longer. And the more regular I am with the cold showers, the better my breath holds get. It's a real bummer because they super suck. Um, nothing for it. I haven't found any re rhyme or reason to when you do the cold showers. You can do them whenever it's convenient. It doesn't have to be before breath work or after. You might see a slight bump in your breath work if you do it before, like immediately before, but that also might just be an accident of like my observations. Um, this is how I like to do it. You can do it any way you want, but like I sit in the bottom of my basin and all I got to do is turn that switch and the cold water comes on and it's just pure cold. And what I do is I go back to my box breathing and I try to relax as much as possible. And then I turn that switch and the instinct is going to be to freak out, <laughs> you know? Um, and I just try not to. So could you take a hot shower and turn the cold water on and do it that way? Yeah, of course. And it'll work just fine. This is not, this is not me being masochistic. This is easier in the long run. It's much harder in the short run, but it's easier in the long run. When that cold water hits me, I'll be miserable for about 10 seconds, maybe 20. And then my body adjusts. Um, you know what? Let's just do it. I'll show you. Okay, ready? Honestly, not that bad today. Not that bad today. So, I'm going through the first phase right now, you know? There. I've already adjusted. Takes about 5, 10, 15 seconds. And then you're good. You know? And then, then I just do my shower in the cold. If I'm feeling good, I'm not right now. <laughs> um, and otherwise, I'll do 30 seconds to a minute and call it. I know the cold showers seem somewhat pointless and it doesn't really make logical sense, but I promise you they help. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for 250 subscribers. This is Joe in real life. I love you. Be good to each other today. And I'm going to try hard to do the same.